so excited that you're interested in healing your body from the inside out, from the core of your body. Literally getting to the core of what is happening inside of your body. So uh, again, my name is Annette, Annette Copeland. I'm a naturopathic doctor and I'm certified in polyvagal theory, which is something that I've been interested in for a while, but decided to do a deeper dive into because of some of my own personal health situations that I've been dealing with and realized that this is one of the missing links in healing. And I don't know why or how no one ever talks about this and no one ever does it. There's been quite a bit of research about it, but I just wanted to start getting the word out and teaching people why this is such an important thing for you to understand and do. So first of all, the vagus nerve runs from the back of your brainstem all the way down to your bottom and it innervates, it talks to, it communicates with all of your organs in between there. Like it's called the wandering nerve because it literally has fingers that touch all of the things. Whoops, sorry about that. Let me put this on quiet. Um, so, and I've had a lot of people ask me questions about neurological conditions like migraines, epilepsy, multiple sclerosis, Parkinson's disease, Dysautonomia is one that's been coming up a lot. Um, gastrointestinal issues like diarrhea, constipation, and digestion. Those are all things that people that have way more knowledge than I do are doing research into right now because they're all connected to the vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve literally is part of the gut-brain axis. It helps the body communicate. And the reasons why it's so important is because you have a central nervous system that runs all of the automatic functions of your body. And within the central nervous system, you have an autonomic nervous system that is actually like the parasympathetic and the sympathetic. So think of the sympathetic nervous system as the system that pretty much runs everything and is in charge of everything. But sometimes the sympathetic nervous system can just kind of take off on its own and it needs to be regulated. So the parasympathetic nervous system comes in and calms. It's the rest and digest portion of the nervous system. And without this communication between the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, your body doesn't function very well. Because when you're in a state of stress, like fight or flight, all of the blood that your body has in it is sent to fight or flight. It's not worrying about digestion. It's not worrying about whether your hair is growing. It's not worrying about all of those things. It's worried about keeping you alive. Your central nervous system is designed to keep you alive. That is its main goal. And the parasympathetic and sympathetic nervous system are working together to keep a sort of balance in your system. And different things can cause you to get stuck in either sympathetic or parasympathetic dominance. And maybe not stuck, but you spend most of your time in one of those places. And this can cause poor, poor vagal function, poor vagal tone. So one of the things that I'm sorry, that word came out so loud. I'm not really sure why I did that. Um, so when things disrupt your um, homeostasis, then you can end up in one way or the other a little more and spend too much time there. So um, let's see, um, excessive stress, trauma, a car accident, diseases, inflammation, certain medications, different types of infections, lots of things can cause this disruption of balance in your system. And it can show up as all sorts of symptoms that are not fun to have. Like I said, I, I named some diseases earlier. I don't like to talk about diseases because I'm not the type of doctor that diagnoses diseases. I like to work on symptoms at the root cause. I'm not worried about what the final diagnosis is. Like That's really not my bailiwick. My bailiwick is helping you heal at a core level 
And then I let other people worry about the final thing. So let's get that core level regulated. Let's get you as a person like <sighs> zen so that you can move in and out of sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system activity automatically. So you can make it something that is automated in a way that's healthy and balanced and calming. Now it's automated for a reason, but we're learning that we have a lot of control over how much time we spend in one or the other. Now I've been stuck in parasympathetic and I've been stuck in sympathetic, but for the last probably five years, I've spent a lot of time in sympathetic dominance. And I've noticed like that was a switch from parasympathetic from before up until I was probably about 45 or so. And then I think my body just got exhausted from that and switched to the other, maybe because something changed, maybe because my health changed, who knows. Um, but some of the things that can be connected to not having a well-toned vagus nerve can be nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, constipation, um, gastroparesis, where the food doesn't process properly, it's not moving through your body the way it should, the lack of tone. Gastroparesis is the technical definition of that is a lack of tone. Your body cannot move the food the way it's supposed to. Your throat starts doing, have you ever watched a snake crawl? You see how the, their muscles like go like down, 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 and that's how they crawl. The inside of your body does that. Your throat all the way down, all the way through, it has these muscles that kind of do this, that push the food down. That's how digestion is aided. And when you have dysautonomia or gastroparesis, what's happening is those nerves, those muscles that are supposed to cause that food and things to go down isn't working properly. So what if by learning how to tone your vagus nerve and learning how to utilize those muscles properly, you could start to feel better and be more healthy and maybe not need all of the medical interventions that you've been having to do and you'll feel better on your own. But I want you to learn how to do this on a regular basis so that you can not only help yourself return to a balanced nervous system, but you can also help other people. Think of what this could do for your whole family. Do you have a child that has maybe ADHD and they struggle to stay calm? What if this process could help calm their nervous system? It, it, the possibilities are endless. But if you want to learn how to center yourself and be able to, when you say you're on your way to a job interview and you're so nervous that you're sick, like you either feel like you're gonna throw up or you're gonna have diarrhea, that is your autonomic nervous system in overdrive. And we need to learn how to calm ourselves and center ourselves and get that parasympathetic nervous system geared up so that it can step in and calm you when it needs to happen. So breathing is one way to do it. I've done this since I was young. I started doing it when I was very young because I have always had issues calming myself and court dates, speeding tickets, new job interviews, getting called into the supervisor's office would all send me into a spiral and I would have so much anxiety and I would be so out of control and then I would feel, literally feel sick about any of those things. And what I learned over time was most of the time, it wasn't even a big deal. Just because your boss or the principal calls you to their office doesn't mean you're in trouble. They might just wanna ask you a question. But by the time you get there, you've got yourself worked into such a state that you can't even be calm and rational because you've been wah, all the way down the hallway till you got there. So let's turn up that parasympathetic nervous system. Let's calm your nervous system. Let's train your nervous system that it can be safe, that it can feel safe because you want to be able to fight or flight. It's a necessary human reaction. You need it. If a bear, which is becoming more and more common these days, steps out of the woods behind your house, you need your sympathetic nervous system to kick in so that you can get your tail in the house and not be attacked by that bear. But you also, once you're in the house, need your parasympathetic nervous system to be like, okay, you're safe now, breathe. 
be calm. It's okay to digest that food. It's okay to sleep. It's okay to feel something besides fear. So let's do that. Let's do that together this week. This is so exciting for me. It's a passion of mine to see people become more emotionally regulated and feel good and feel better. And I know that I'm super excited right now and I'm talking really fast. That's also my sympathetic nervous system at work. So I keep swallowing and I keep breathing deep. That's a natural response. My body is trying to calm me down. My body's like, whoa, girl, why are you so excited? You need to bring it back. Bring it back to center, girl. So if you see me yawn or sigh or take a hard swallow, that's because my parasympathetic nervous system is like going, hey, 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 calm, calm. Let's calm this down. So um, I just wanted to bring that up. And then there's some other things that we can touch on that we'll get deeper into over the course of this next week. But breathing exercises are important. And learning to breathe using your diaphragm muscle is key in this whole process. If you breathe shallow, if you breathe only with your lungs, ooh, I think I need some minerals. I almost got a cramp doing that. Try taking one of these tape measures, and I can't see myself here. You can't see it. Okay, try taking one of these tape measures like this and put it right around, I'm gonna have to probably get a little taller here. Put it right around your ribs right here. And let me tip this down a little bit so you can see. Let's see if that is better. It's gonna take it a second to catch up. But if you put this around right here, and I don't care what the measurement is, it doesn't matter. Um, all right, I'm gonna stand up so you can see this. Okay, so put it right here with your air out. <sighs> okay, and then when you breathe in, let it expand. If it didn't expand, then you're not using your diaphragm to breathe. So watch this. So breathing from my diaphragm looks like this. I don't know if you could see that, but my stomach went out. So if you do this and you're breathing only from your lungs, your diaphragm is not going to expand. And this is a way to check it. So put your measuring thing here and take a breath. Did you feel that? Did you see that? It moved. Now, if you want to measure it, you can see where you're at. So that's uh, 38, just so y'all know. I'm at 38, got that? Okay, so 38 is where I'm at. And then I'm gonna hold it right there, like that, if I can do it again. And I breathed in, and now it's at 39 and a half. Now I may have overdone that breath a little bit because when you're thinking about your breath, it works a little better. Like it's a little more expansive because you're thinking about it. But when you're breathing, this part of your body should expand. It should expand. So if it's not expanding, then you're not breathing properly. And I'm gonna do some breathing exercises this week. I just need to um, get the time to do the video um, to teach you guys how to do that breathing properly. But just focus on breathing and realize that when you take in a breath, your stomach should also go in and out. Um, somehow back in my childhood, I convinced myself that lungs were for breathing and I stopped using my stomach. And part of it was that I was always trying to hold my stomach in because I was trying to be hot. And holding your stomach in is difficult. It makes it difficult for your diaphragm to move. Now it can be done. And as you learn how to do it properly, you will be able to do both. But it's something that you need to focus on. It's something you need to be aware of. Bring awareness to the fact that you need to breathe properly. So that's one of the exercises. Something else that you can do, a friend of mine recommended this to me that does somatic healing. And she said she actually jumps into the river near her house um, in the wintertime. She loves the cold, that shock of that cold water. 
but you can also take a cold shower. You can put cold water on your face. You can take an ice pack and put it right here on your chest if you're feeling stressed. All of those things activate that vagus nerve system and gets the parasympathetic system awakened and starts working. Um, something else is, um, let's see, making sure that your body is functioning. If you're constipated and you're not going to the bathroom, this definitely applies to your situation. It's something we need to work on. Make sure that you're not eating a bunch of sugar. Make sure you're taking probiotics. And um, if you're taking, if you're eating foods that have like heavy meals, like animal proteins and stuff, use a digestive enzyme. It's very important. Probiotics and digestive enzymes are so underrated. It's very important to do those. 